Before I can even say my intro, I must write what it is wrong, and I must address this. It is not a gate. It is not a gate. It is not the Agata Forest. It is a git. Yes. I've been informed this by thousands of people, and I've looked it up myself. It is a git. I knew that I was probably pronouncing it wrong, but that's how I've pronounced it my whole life. So, now that I've addressed that, hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Pokemon Coliseum! In the last episode, we went and took down Scrub back at the Relic Forest. He was trying to destroy the Relic Stone. We found out that there is a connection with the Relic Stone and Celebi, as well as possibly Shadow Pokemon. In this episode, we're going to learn more about that, but I am now going to announce what the winner of my nickname contest was, because about 17, 18,000 comments later in the first 24 hours, I picked out a name. Now, really quick, before I reveal what the nickname is, I apologize I'm just kind of standing around doing nothing right here. I don't mean to waste your time, but I think this needs to be established, addressed, okay? I need to address that... Even though I read the first few thousand comments, when I thought I had found a winner, I went back to check the first few thousand to make sure that nobody had suggested the name before. I didn't see anyone that had when I was reading through them, but I might have missed a few. And unfortunately, after 10,000 comments, YouTube does not allow you to go any further back in the comment archive. I kept doing it, but after 10,000, it was telling me that there were no comments. So... I was not able to recheck the first few pages of comments to make sure that nobody had suggested the name first. If you did suggest this name first, I greatly apologize, but I have no way of verifying it. And now that I know this about YouTube, this same mistake will not be made in future one in future um in future nicknaming contests. So like I said, I don't think anybody suggested the name that I'm using before, because I did not read anybody, but I was not able to go back and check the first few thousand comments to verify it. If you did suggest it and have some way of proving it, by all means, tweet to me. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and nickname my Espeon, and I haven't healed since the last episode. <laughs> I forgot about that. All right, so a lot of suggestions for Espeon. Really common ones were Amethyst because of the color. Some of you wanted to make a pun. A lot of you suggested Espionage. Some of you suggested Lucas because it's psychic and that's a hero and that's something I actually didn't think of. And then there were many, many of you that suggested Twilight Sparkle, not realizing that that goes way over the character limit. But I think I have picked out a name. Let me go ahead and... Starts with an S. If you suggest a name that begins with an S, you might have this. Ooh, who knows? Got an A. Got an I. Got a K. Got an O, and what could the last letter be? Is it Psycho? No. It is Psycho! This means the greatest, the best, a lot of things in Japanese. A lot of people also suggested Espeon's Japanese name, which was kind of unoriginal. This, is, this just means... This not only means the greatest slash the best in Japanese, which I think is very fitting for my Espeon, but it's pronounced the same as Psycho! Oh, yeah! I highly approve of this. This name was first suggested by Izzy Eevee. 13670. So, thank you very much for this name. I'll be contacting you via private message very soon, and that's really all I have to say about that. So, now we know Psycho. It is a better name than before. Why this nickname is Lugginess? Why it goes right off the scale. Do you want to cherish your Psycho now and beyond? Okay, so I apologize for how long that took, but I feel like a lot of those things needed to be addressed, okay? So, now that we're done with that, let's actually press on with the story. I'll make this video a bit longer than normal because I feel like I wasted a lot of time at the beginning, but it was stuff that needed to be addressed, so, yeah. Anyway. So, we were told to go here near the Pokemon. What do we got? Senilor. Oh, you mean you wanted to see my dad? He's been getting pretty forgetful lately, though. I'm afraid you might not be able to help you much. He's your dad? Dude, this guy is old! Let's... Talk to the Wob effect. So nasu, he says. Okay, we just said so, but anyway, that's where the origin is. Ah, Yurigan's beloved Torchic. <laughs> way to make fun of how skinny her legs are. No way. Do who'd you say you were? What's that? You wanted to talk? Ask me. Se 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 I don't know. His name is like a play on senile, but I, I can't pronounce it. About Celebi. Have no fear. Senilor is here. No problem. Forget it. Forget something that important. That's not gonna happen. Let's start with the Relic in Relic Forest. According to ancient lore, the Relic is said to hold the power of time travel for Celebi. That mysterious power is said to revive the most pleasant 
most enjoyable memories of Pokemon. If only it worked on me and brought back my memories of youth. Ho ho ho! Would you like to hear more? You bet we would! To meet Celebi directly, you must use an item called the Time Flute. That is, the, that is all one needs to bring Celebi to the Relic Forest. Once, Celebi will surely cause darkness to flee from the hearts of any Pokemon. So that is very interesting indeed. Uh, now that we've learned that, how about we head back to Egan's place and see what he's got for us, because Bella went upstairs to try to find a stone tablet that goes to the Relic in Relic Forest. Oh, she's downstairs! Ah, Rui, welcome home! I finally found the small tablet. Alright, so it's been passed down Egan's family for generations. Let's check it out. And we had to walk all the way over there to collect it. So we get the small tablet. There are words carved in it. I like that Wes read the words. Entirely necessary text. In, uh, in Agit's mystical relic, Celebi's power shelters. A heart imprisoned by shadows. Its last door shall be opened by the power within. The relic must be have some effect on shadow Pokemon. I will leave that for you to determine for yourselves. Okay. So, how about... Whoa! Hey! Email! My PDA just rang. By the way, if you thought my ringtone was ridiculous, I need to show you the email function on this thing really quick. Uh, the email function on the PDA, I'd like to show you. You see this thing down here called alert tone? I like how I'm ignoring the words emergency. Look at how many freaking ringtones they give you. Look at all this. Was this really necessary to spend development time on? God, anyway. Wes, we've got big trouble. I just got word from our people that Mount Battle's under attack by a mysterious group of thugs. Please, can you go help? We think that the same group, though, the one that Mirror B belongs to. We're counting on you. Okay. So you've heard about selling a Mount Battle. We also heard of about a certain Pokemon called... Er, we also heard of a certain person called Dakim who was there uh, from the Cypher Peon Scrub that we were meeting with. Those crooks are loose on Mount Battle now? That's awful. We can't let this go on. Let Wes, let's go. Oh, wait. Grandpa, where is Mount Battle anyway? Mount Battle's to the northeast. You can see it in the distance once you leave the village. Hurry, Rui! Well, we would hurry, but that would kind of take the main purpose of this video out. Uh, now that we have actually done this, now that we have that order to go to Mount Battle, you are not able to buy Ultra Balls as well as a few other special uh, types of Pokeballs in Outskirts Stand now that that has happened. I don't think it's ever really necessary for me to pick one up, though, but I would recommend that you at least have a lot of at least some type of ball on you right now just because of stuff that's coming up. Let me go and heal really quick, though, before we press on. So, we're heading back to the Relic Forest. Now, I love this little room. There's no music in it, unfortunately, but I really like it. I can't really explain it. It just, this little room resonates with me, and I'm not really sure why. Maybe just because the water looked really good for 2004? I don't know. But, now that we're here... Is that right? Those crooks have raided Mount Battle? I get it. They're after Vander on Mount Battle. They're going after Vander on Mount Battle. I heard rumors that Vander has the ability to summon Celebi. So they weren't able to destroy the Relic Forest, so instead, they're going after someone who has the ability to summon Celebi. But let's see what the shiny homework has to say. I found an Ein file. Okay, really quick, this also needs to be addressed. It is pronounced Ein. I know. Get it? I know. <laughs> okay. In all seriousness, I had never, ever gotten the pun of his name that he's named after Albert Einstein. But uh, I've been playing Coliseum for eight years. And I had never realized that he was named after Albert Einstein. But in my defense, nobody in Ori has names that make sense. I wasn't looking for cleverness in his name. Let's see here. The purification shadow Pokemon several factors. Celebi appears to have the power to boost the purification process. If a shadow Pokemon encounters Celebi, it recalls how its heart was before being closed and reverts back to its original form. Relic Stone of Agit of Agit Village appears to have the power to complete the purification process. These factors must be eliminated if a shadow Pokemon plans to succeed. Why don't they just, like, bomb this area? I mean, I'm one dude, and I was able to bomb Team Snagum's hideout, and yet, I don't know. I'm not really sure why they don't, but anyway. Let's see, there's a Pokemon that may open the room its heart. Ooh! We can now purify our Shadow Pokemon. What does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and try it out on Quilava, the first Shadow Pokemon that's with us that we, act that we actually obtained. Well, technically, Makuhita was first, but this is the first one that we're actually using. Alright, we've opened the door to cool Avatar. It regained the move Sunny Day. That will power up Fire-type moves, lower the power of Water moves, and make Solar Beam capable of being used in a single turn. And we get 10,000 experience points! Yes, all the experience that you have gained up to this point with the Shadow Pokemon, they will gain it all at once, so you kind of get a bit of a mega level up. Get level 33, and that's it. Okay, uh, I could nickname my Quilava here, but I think that's best left up to you guys. 
So what I'm going to be doing here is, well, you know what? I'll, I'll talk about this later. I don't want to waste any more time because we have a lot to do here. So next we're going to do Quagsire. He was the second member of the team that we picked up. Let's do that. Okay, I had to. We get the move Mud Shot. That is a decent spot. That's a decent ground type move. It lowers the opponent's accuracy, and we get over 9,000 experience. I apologize for that. Get level 33, and that's as far as it goes. Apparently, I've been using SP on Mr. Revis a lot. I'm really curious how much experience Mr. Drevis is going to get, actually. Okay, let's see. Boom. Let's do it. Okay, I'll stop. All right, so we get the move Psybeam back, so we get a nice special attack for it, and it regets. Whoa! Um, you can see who the clear favorite was out of the four Pokemon I've been using. Level thirty-one, level thirty-two, level thirty-three. Level 34, level 35, level 36, level 37? It's, oh, whoa, it's learning Pain Split. Oh, that's an interesting move. It adds up Mistrevious' HP with the opponent's HP and divides it in half and then splits it evenly between the two Pokemon that it, the, between uh, the user and who it was used on. Uh, what do I want to use that on? Normally, I would keep Mean Look because it's kind of a nice move to have, but in a game that's entirely double battles against the AI, I'm not really sure that I'd want to have Mean Look. So yeah, let's get rid of Mean Look and learn Bane Split. That could be interesting. Okay, so we're going to learn that. So all the moves that you could have learned that you didn't, don't worry, you're not missing out. And there we go. Level 37. My god. Okay. That is... That is insane. Uh, I feel really bad. I feel like I've been underusing the rest of my team. Uh, Mistrevis, you're going in the back for a while. Uh, this Shadow Furret is not a capable of being purified yet. But that wraps up everything that we want to do here in a Git Village. So how about we take off? Here we go. We're going along the docks. And now we have a, finally a new area on our map. A place of challenging trick. A, a place of challenging training for all trainers. It is currently held by a sinister gang. Challenging training is kind of awkward translation, but let's go! So, lucky for us, you can see it on the horizon, and we can just drive there. Ooh, it's dark and mysterious and has lava coming from it. I don't think that's really healthy. Considering all that... What, what the heck is going... Why is she running? Look at that. She's got like a towel around her neck. She's just running. What do you got? It's terrible, terrible. I, t I tell you, it's terrible. <sighs> Mount Battle's under attack by a group of shady people. I'm so out of breath. Okay. Look at that. Look out. It's the hipster. Think of taking on the Mount Battle Challenge? Forget about it. I'm able to clear the place for now. Here, Mount Battle's been taken over by a bunch of trainers that use weird Pokemon. Ooh, that's kind of not goodish. Uh, So, Mount Battle... I kind of like this little plaza area. It's... I don't know, it just it kind of sticks out from the rest of the game, and not in a bad way, I, I kind of like it. Um, but yes, here at Mount Battle, there are a few different areas. Right over here would be the coupon exchange. It's Everything is suspended because of those horrible people. This is a shop that opens to us later on, which is sells some really interesting items. We'll have to check it out later. Uh, there's a Pokemon Center right here that we can use. But most importantly, I'm going to head through the middle here, and... No! Sorry, I can't let you in. It's full of thugs. It's dangerous. Oh, you heard about us from Duking? You must be here to save us. You see, it was me who contacted Duking for help. I didn't think you would get here so quickly. But please be careful. The power of the Pokemon isn't normal. Alright, so how about we head on in? Um, I am... Okay, making absolutely sure I've got Quilava and Quagsire out. Just because I don't want to use my Mistrevis more than I have been. Oh my god. Uh, level 37. I mean, it's nine levels higher than Umbreon! It's crazy! Okay. Let's, uh, step forward. So, Mount Battle, for those of you that don't know, this is an area where you are fighting 100 trainers. You're not fighting them all right now, mind you, thankfully, for my sanity. This is an area with 100 floors to it. There's a trainer on each floor. You have to fight your way up to the top. And there is a very, very special reward for you if you do this. 
I'm not gonna spoil what it is quite yet. It's not so great in the story mode, but in the battle mode of Pokemon Coliseum, after you've 100%ed the story mode, there is a, an extremely special reward for you if you've purified every single Shadow Pokemon there is. So, we'll see what that is when we see what that is, but for the time being, I'm not gonna talk about it too much. Pretty much, we just need to take down enough trainers to the point where we get to where the Cypher Peons are, or even greater than that. So, for the time being, I am just speeding these up and, you know, playing music in the background while doing my post-commentary shtick. And, I just want to say this straight up, I don't know if they designed it specially for this or not, but Mount Battle, at least at this point in time when you're fighting all these trainers to get up to whatever's going on, to get up to where Vander is, to hopefully find out what's going on with Celebi, it's just, for some odd reason, Surf is all-powerful. It's crazy. If you have a Pokemon that knows Surf, be it Quagsire, Croconaw, or, Quil or uh, Quillfish, all of them, you are ha gonna have such a quick and easy trip up here. And it's nuts just how fast everything is gonna go for you. It's crazy. I keep saying crazy. I don't know why I keep saying crazy. But, yeah. You are gonna have such an easy time here. And I, I will say, by the way, I like how the surf animation looks on these uh, platforms. It's just like, where's that water coming from? And it's really odd that you're, like, flooding, like, hundred feet, like hundreds of feet in the air. I mean, that must take a lot out of Quagsire to do that. I don't know. So, there's not really much else going on. Uh, I will say this, that I am going to be dreading this area, because, yes, for the LP, I will be going through all 100 floors at some point, and I am going to hate it when I do. Because I might like Pokemon Coliseum, and it might have been better than I remembered it when I went back and played it last year, which is why I ultimately decided to let's play it next, because I was very torn on Pokemon Coliseum. I didn't know if I wanted to do this next, or if I wanted to do Platinum next, because a lot of people were gunning for Platinum, and I wouldn't lie. I would love to commentate Platinum. I know a lot about Platinum. Uh, Diamond Pearl Platinum is probably the game in the series that I know the most about, and is the one that I've played the most. But then I was kind of thinking, like, well, if you go in order of main series games, Coliseum is technically the next one. So I was thinking about it, and I decided to go back and play Coliseum to see if it was, you know, if I still liked it. And it was better than I remembered it, which is why I ultimately decided to do this Let's Play. And by the way, never realized about the Hunter? Oh my god, your boots are huge! Like, I didn't mention it earlier we fought him though, but I mean, just look at that! Those boots are gigantic! I don't know why I keep bringing that up, it just... I've noticed, like, everyone in Ore just has massive feet. I've said this before, but, you know, I just thought I'd bring it up again, I suppose. I don't know, I'm weird like that. I can't really put my finger on why I keep bringing that up, but, yeah. Also, in the way of nicknames, I would like to open nicknaming for Quilava in this video. Um, you have 24 hours once again, meaning that day after tomorrow, the winners will be revealed because it would be impossible for me to post at my usual time and have a winning nickname when I give you 24 hours to submit one. Um, so I'd like to open up nicknaming for Quilava now. Uh, no other Pokemon. Don't submit names for others because they will be ignored. Because I saw a lot of people on the Espeon contest submitting names for other Pokemon, and it's just kind of a waste of your time because it's not going to be acknowledged because that contest was just for Espeon. So, now we're going to be doing one for Quilava. So, go ahead and leave all your Quilava related nicknames in the comments, and see you guys then. Or see you guys next time. I mean, I meant. Alright, and with that, we've taken down the first nine of these trainers. Up there, the tenth one, is where our challenge lies. Next time on Pokemon Coliseum, we'll be taking on that challenge. See you guys then.